everyone, I'm Natalie from Cantilever and welcome to this second Strength and Stretch session and our sixth collaboration with Rejuvenate Physio. Remember, all our previous sessions are available to catch up on on the Cantilever YouTube channel. We're delighted to be joined again by Louise from Rejuvenate Physio, along with Lucy from City of Birmingham, Mia from Park Breaking, and Lily Clow from Aylesbury. We absolutely love to see how you're getting on with the sessions. So again, we're going to be running a giveaway all week where the winner will be picked at random from your social media posts, tagging Cantilever and Rejuvenate Physio, along with the hashtag strength and stretch too. If you have a private account, please direct messages with your videos or pictures. You could win a Rejuvenate Physio goodie bag and a 50 pounds Cantilever voucher. Have a great session, everybody. Thanks, Natalie. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our second Strength and Stretch Sunday session. Today's workout, again, is Pilates and yoga inspired, and we'll focus on core, hamstring, and splits work. All that is needed equipment-wise are an exercise mat, a pillow, or a cushion for comfort. However, if you have a cantilever hip flexor stretcher, or a wobble board, or a long resistance band that's elastic, then have these ready for later. It's really important that you listen to your body and only do what feels comfortable. Remember, focus on the quality of the movements, not the number of repetitions you do or how far you stretch. Have a drink with you in case you get thirsty and remember it's okay to take a break and rest at any time. Okay, is everyone ready to go? First, we need to do a cardiovascular warm up to get your heart pumping and your blood circulating around your body. So we will begin by doing some skipping through our imaginary skipping rope and we're going to run through that skipping rope. So let's go girls, get your skipping rope going, knees up, that's it, try and point those toes, fantastic. Knees up, up, up. Good, get those arms moving. Stretch as much as you can. You're halfway through, we're going to do about 30 seconds. Brilliant work, girls. Okay, now we're going to bring our arms back down by our side and do some straight leg kicks forward. So you're going to keep those knees nice and straight. Try and point those toes as you kick the legs in front of you. If you want to make this harder, you can turn as you do the exercise. So you can flip from one side of the room round to the other as you go. But it's entirely your choice. That's it, keep stretching those legs, point those toes, arms swinging by your side, amazing. Now we're going to go back to the jumping through our skipping rope. So we're going to get that skipping rope swinging and we're going to jump forwards and backwards through it. Let's go girls. Brilliant. Keep those legs glued together, try and point those toes as you push off the floor. Amazing, then if you feel able, you can start looking to the right and the left as you do this. So we loosen your neck as well. Very nice, girls. Fantastic. Let's move on to heel flicks. So hands behind your backs and you're trying to move your heels towards your bottom so your knees are bending. That's it, nice strong kicks. And if you feel able, you can turn yourself. So you start facing one wall and you do a 180 degree turn and you end up facing the other side of the room. That's it, point those feet girls. Keep those cores nice and tight, amazing. So then it's back to skipping. And this time we're going to skip side to side through our skipping rope. So let's get that skipping rope swinging. 
super and you're jumping from right to left. Think about straightening those knees as you push off the floor. Keep your core nice and tight. Amazing. Bouncing from one side to the other. Super stuff. For the next warm-up exercise, we're going to lift your arms up by your ears and you're going to kick your legs straight behind you. So you kick those legs back, let's go. Toes pointed, so your body's leaning slightly forwards and you're pushing those legs behind you. As you drive off the floor, try and stretch through those feet. Fantastic girls, arms up by ears. Let's think about stretching through those fingers and elbows. Five more seconds of this. Brilliant. Let's pop hands on your hips and we're going to do some rebound jumps where you're pushing through your Achilles to lift off the floor. Let's go. Super. Legs squeezed together. Stomachs tight. Shoulders square. Look straight up. You're nearly there. We just have a few exercises left to do of this cardiovascular warm up. Brilliant. Let's now go on to doing a star jump alternated with a spotty dog. So you will end up jumping your feet apart to the side, then back in, and then one leg will jump forwards as one leg jumps backwards. Good, let's go girls, keep going. Super. So you can do it like Lucy, where she's doing a star jump, then a spotty dog and back to a star jump, or you can do star jump, spotty dog, spotty dog like Mia and Lily Clo. Brilliant. A few more seconds, girls. See if you can swing those arms with the stars and the spotty dogs too, so everything's nice and warm. Just two exercises left to go. Let's do some sprinting on the spot. Let's get those arms pumping and those feet moving nice and fast. Go, go, go. That's it. How quickly can you move those feet? Drive those arms. Let's think about preparing for running down the tumble track or preparing for vault. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Brilliant. Okay, final exercise is a shoulder stand to roll out and to jump up into a stretch position. Okay, so we sit back. We roll to a shoulder stand and you roll through a squat to jump up. Brilliant. Think about squeezing those legs together and push as high as you can off the floor. Some of you may need to use your hands to help stand up and that's okay if you do. It's not a problem. Good, we'll do a couple more. Okay, absolutely fantastic girls. That's the cardiovascular warm up complete. Now we need to wake up our muscles a little bit more. So we're going to run through a few extra exercises. The first one we are going to do is a march action where you lift one leg to a parallel passe position and then you kick it out. So the girls are going to demonstrate that now for you. So they pick one leg up to a parallel position, kick it out and circle the leg back round to the starting position. Let's try five on each side. If you want to make it slightly harder, you can rise up onto your tiptoes like Mia is doing. Only kick as far as feels comfortable. Super. So when you've done one leg, switch over onto the other side. So parallel passe, straighten the knee so you kick out and swing the leg back down to the starting position. Super stuff. 
Exercise number two is a sumo squat, which is a wider squat in a ballet second position up to a heel raise. So you lower into the squat, keeping your kneecaps lined up with the middle of your feet, and then you straighten your knees and drive up onto your tiptoes. Super girls, five to 10 of those. Sumo squat and drive up, keeping your balance, okay? So we need our cores activated. Imagine there's a balloon on top of your head pulling you straight up towards the clouds as you drive onto your tiptoes. Looks like Lucy has a helper, super stuff. Brilliant girls. One more and up we go. Okay, now we're going to do a side lunge to a single leg balance position. So if you step your right leg straight out to the side and lunge, so your right leg ends up bending and your left leg is straight. Then you drive off the left leg, straighten the right leg and balance on that side with the knee pointing forward in a parallel passe position. And then you go in the opposite direction. Good stuff. So lunge, drive up to the balance position. Think about having your shoulders and hips level and square. So your body should look straight when you're balanced and shouldn't be leaning to one side or the other. That's it, slightly harder than it looks this exercise to keep your control as you drive up, but it will certainly wake some of your leg and your core muscles up. Brilliant. So now we're going to face side on and do something called a double leg Romanian deadlift into a lunge. So you need to position yourself with your feet hip width apart and your knee should be slightly relaxed. So there's a small bend in the knees. You then hinge forwards at your hips, keeping your back straight and shoulders square. Then you drive your hips forwards and you return to the starting position. And then you step forwards into a lunge, keeping the body up nice and tall, and back we go. Fantastic, girls. Let's try five on each leg. So, nice double leg Romanian deadlift. Super Lucy. You can see Lucy's back stays nice and straight through the whole process. And it doesn't arch as she comes up. Very nice, Mia. Good, Lily Clove. Super. Just remember those shoulders, girls. You don't want them to round or hunch forwards. And you can think maybe about going slowly down to the deadlift and exploding up out of it. Good. Okay, so we just have two exercises left. The first one is to wake up your core. And so what we're going to do is fold down to pike fold, okay? And then we are going to walk our hands forwards to a front support position. You then reach your right hand back, so you pike at your hips and you touch your opposite ankle, your left ankle. You then come back to front support, hit that plank shape, make sure the middle of the back's not too rounded, and then reach the left hand towards the right ankle. Good, and walk your hands back to the start position. Fantastic, let's do four more of those, shall we? So at your own pace, think about your plank shapes. So lift your head a little bit so your chins are not stuck on your chest. Good. Very nice, Mia. And what you'll feel as you reach back is it twists and stretches a little bit in the middle of your back and make your support arm work a little bit harder to keep you nice and balanced. That's it girls, think about those plank shapes. So we're in a neutral plank, not necessarily a dished plank, with our backs nice and straight. Super, okay. Last exercise, when we're ready, let's finish with 10 squat 
squat downs to jump up. So squat and jump, explode off that floor as low as you can into the squat. Just watch you don't catch your hands on the ceiling. So if you have room, then you can drive your arms up by your ears. If you're a little bit tighter for space, keep your arms by your side like Lucy. Excellent work, girls. I think it's time for a quick drink and then we'll move on. So we are now going to do a little Pilates inspired session that is designed to challenge the muscles in your stomach and around your hips. This is an ideal time to think about your posture, positioning and alignment. For the first circuit, we are going to be in a seated position and you'll see that Lucy will do the exercises sat on the floor. Mia will be positioned on her wobble board with her hands behind her for a little bit of extra support. And Lily Clo will be sat on the wobble board without using her hands. So it's entirely your choice which level you try. But remember, it's always better to do things well at a lower level than do a harder exercise badly. Let's discuss our shape. So for the first circuit, we'll be in a tuck sit position where you're sat with your weight through the bony parts of your bottom. Your feet should be pointed and up at the same height as your hips. We're looking for your chin to be tucked in and nice and long and not poking forward. So you can see there, Lucy's demonstrating what we don't want to see, we want it up nice and tall. Our shoulders should be square, not rounded. Your back should be beautifully straight and as long as possible, rather than slouched. And your thighs should be close to your chest, not far away from your body. Okay, so everyone has the shape. We're going to rest for a second and then we're going to try three little exercises, eight to ten repetitions of each, trying to keep our core engaged and a beautiful posture. Are we ready girls? Let's go for exercise number one. So everyone position themselves in their tuck, sit, stance. Draw up through your tummy muscles and you're slowly going to straighten one leg so it moves towards a pike position, lower it back down and swap sides. As you're doing this, think about having nice square shoulders. Draw up through those tummy muscles. Keep that chin tucked in. That's it. Luz, can you do that with your hands off the floor? Beautiful, grow up nice and tall. Fantastic. Now, the second exercise. We are going to clap underneath our thighs and then over the top of our head. You'll notice Mia will do one clap, pop our hands back down to stabilize and then do the second clap. Okay, girls? Back into that tuck sit position. Let's work these stomach and hip muscles. Grow up nice and tall. Keep your feet high. Good, beautiful Lily Clo. Just see if you can lengthen that back a little bit more and keep those tiptoes at the same height as your knees. Very nice, Lucy. Excellent work. And the hardest exercise in this circuit is moving from a tucked sit to a pike sit, okay? So everyone back into their start position. Chins tucked in, shoulders square, thighs close to chest, super, and straighten your knees to move towards a pike sit. And we can try up to eight to 10 of these as you feel comfortable. Remember, only work through a range of movement that doesn't give you pain. Focus on the quality and your form rather than the number of repetitions you do. Fantastic girls, that's circuit one complete. 
So for circuit number two, we are going to do something called a hamstring ladder, which works your tummy muscles, your glutes, your bottom muscles, and your hamstrings, which are at the back of your thigh. So we're going to position yourself lying on your back. Lucy will be on the floor. Mia and Lily Chloe will be using their wobble boards. So to begin with, your knees are bent to somewhere between 90 and 120 degrees, so your heels are fairly close to your bottom. Make sure your feet are hip width apart, your knees are hip width apart, so your kneecaps are pointing straight up to the ceiling, your hands are by your side with your palms facing down. You're then going to squeeze your bottom muscles together and lift your bottom up off the floor so you make a straight line from head to toe and hold that shape there, girls. You'll start to feel it wakes up some muscles and some of you may get some added challenges if your pets run underneath and over you, that's absolutely fine. So hold that shape there. Keep drawing in through your tummy muscles and you're trying to make a straight line from your shoulders to your knees. So no archy backs and no sticking out rib cages. Super. Then you lower your bottoms back down to the floor. We're going to make this a little bit harder now by doing one of two things. So Lucy will walk her feet further away from her bottom. So her knees are now less bent. Lily Chloe will slide her bottom away from the wobble board as will Mia. So a little bit further back for me, Mia. Fantastic. Okay, check your feet are still hip width apart and your kneecaps are pointing up towards the ceiling. Push through your heels, squeeze your bottom cheeks together and peel your bottom and your spine up off the floor to make a straight line from head to toe. Try and keep your lower back nice and straight, not archy. And we're going to hold that shape there. If you would like a little bit of an extra challenge, you could, like Mia, lift your arms up overhead. So Mia's going to try that now, just picking her arms up overhead and you'll have less support. But as you do it, think dish in your rib cage. So rib cage down, hips up. So your backs are not archy. Beautiful, Mia. Did you feel the difference then? Very good. Super and relax back down. The final level of the hamstring ladder is with just a slight bend in your knees, about 30 degrees. So Lucy again is going to walk those feet away from her bottom and Lily Clo and Mia are going to slide away from their wobble board. Super. Push through your heels, squeeze your bottom cheeks together and lift up off the floor. This is the hardest of all of them. See if you can keep that position for me. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Rib cages down, hips up, back straight, core activated and this should start burning at the back of your thighs and your hamstrings. Super work girls. That's the hamstring ladder circuit complete. Did everyone feel that working in the back of their thighs? Fab. So now we are going to try and challenge your core and hip muscles a little bit more by doing a second core circuit. So for this, you will be positioned again to begin with in the tucked upright sit position. So the girls are going to pop themselves into that stance. Remember, chin tucked in, shoulders square. Draw up through your core so your back is nice and straight. Knees bent to start with, and then you slowly straighten your knees up to pike. Good, keep that position and now flex and point your toes. Only flex them as much as feels comfortable. You could do one leg at a time or you can do both together and we'll try eight to 12. Chins in, shoulders square, grow up tall, back straight, beautiful. Very, very good. Okay, so that should really start waking up these stomach muscles. But number two of this circuit, you are going to straighten one leg and one arm. So we'll pop you back into that pipe sit position. 
Lily Clo and Lucy are either going to hold onto their legs or if you need some extra support, hands behind you. Then your right leg straightens down towards the floor. So you let go and you lift the arm up if your hands are off the floor and then you return back to the pike sit position. Beautiful. Try not to fall into a slouch position in your back. Very good, Lily Clo. Grow up and make your body as long as possible the whole way through. Try and think about your knees being straight, toes being pointed. We would like beautifully tight pike shapes in the air. If you're somersaulting, amazing girls. So this is really quite hard. One more, super, and relax. The final exercise in this circuit is the most difficult. So we're going to start in that pike sit position and then we're going to do a small semi-circular action of our legs. So one leg would go clockwise halfway around the clock and the other leg anti-clockwise and then you switch over and return back. So small circles and if you feel able they may get bigger and bigger so you're almost going through a straddle action. Let's have a look, girls. So up nice and tall, get into that height. Sit position, straight back. Good, wow, Lucy, just the, just the head. Good, go out one way, back the other. Out and in, there we go. Heads, shoulders, core and tummy. And I think the girls will all agree that's definitely activated their stomach muscles. Fantastic work, beautiful shapes. To finish the class, we are going to focus on some hamstring specific strengthening and lengthening work that should help with your splits, positioning and mobility. What we will do is we will only practice on one leg during the class and it's your choice which leg you work, but I would suggest after this session that you then go away and practice the other side so you are as symmetrical and square as you possibly can be and your splits are as good on one side as they are on the other. So for the first exercise, the girls are going to position themselves lying on their back and for the split leg that they choose, they're going to pull that thigh towards their chest and hold the back of the thigh. So if you're working your right leg splits, it will be your right thigh that pulls into your chest. If it's left leg splits, it will be the left leg that pulls in towards the chest. They're holding the back of the thigh and they're slowly going to straighten the knee only as far as they can with it feeling comfortable. Remember, never push into pain. So the knee slowly straightens and bends straightens and bends. We're going to do four to five of these nice and smooth and slowly and then for the last four to five repetitions, repetitions we're going to kick the speed up a little bit. As you're doing it try to keep your other leg flat on the floor with your kneecap pointing up to the ceiling and your toes nice and pointed. Okay, and with your eyes, always try and look straight up so you're in a nice position as you would be in your splits. Fantastic, girls. For exercise number two, if you have an elastic resistance band, now is the time to get it and we're going to huck it around your foot. So it doesn't matter what type of band you have. Some of you may be using loop bands like Lily Clo and Mia, so you can huck that on your foot. Others may have just a long piece of elastic resistance like Lucy. And if you're doing that, pop it under the arch of your foot and then cross it over. So you're holding the right side of the band in the left hand and the left side of the band in the right hand. If you can, you want both arms up overhead. Before we start, then think about your straight leg remaining nice and extended. So the toes are pointed, the knee is straight, and the kneecap is pointing up towards the ceiling. 
draw in through your tummy muscles and make sure the back of your rib cage stays in contact with the floor. Then you drive the leg that's in the air down towards the floor and control it back to the starting position. So it relaxes back to the starting position and then you're having to work against the band as you push it down. Let's do four or five slowly. Then if you feel in control and are able to keep the right shape, then you can pick up the speed a little bit more. Very nice, Mia. Look at that. Arms are back. Try and keep those hands in contact with the floor. The back of the rib cage touching the floor and your core nice and tight. Very good, girls. And you should start to feel this working then at the back of your thigh. Super stuff. So now we can take the band off, pop it to the side, and we're going to lift up to a shoulder bridge position. So lying on your back, knees bent up, close to your bottom but not right in towards your bottom. Make sure your feet are hip width apart, your knees are hip width apart and facing the ceiling. You're going to lift up to that shoulder bridge position so you make a straight line from your shoulders to your knees without sticking out your rib cages and then slowly walk your feet or slide them away from your body without letting your back arch. When you get as low as you can control, pop your bottom down onto the floor and slide your feet back towards your bottom before lifting your hips up in the air again. So you lift up and then slowly and smoothly walk your feet away from your body so your knees start to straighten just to a point that you feel you can control. Then bottom goes down, you bend knees and pull them back up. Super, let's try eight of those. Imagine there's a tray of drinks balanced across your hips and you want to keep every drop of drink in all of the glasses. So your hips should stay level. You shouldn't wobble from side to side. You're just gazing those eyes up towards the ceiling. Super. And this should really be waking up your hamstring muscles now. One more. And then we will move on to our triple threat lunge. Brilliant. So the girls are now going to roll up into a lunge position that we covered in the strength and stretch session one. So they'll be in a lunge with their front leg of their splits ahead. The knee is positioned at the front leg over the ankle and you can use a cushion like Lily Clo under the back leg to make it nice and comfortable. So you should be at 90 degrees in both legs. You're going to draw in through your tummy muscles to activate those abs, squeeze your glutes together and hold two, three. Then pop the opposite arm to your front leg down onto the floor and twist your body towards your front leg. Hold, two, three. Pop both hands down on the floor. Sit back slightly and straighten your front leg. Hold, two, three. Then rotate your hips so your toes roll away from your body. Then in, good. And then after you've done that, slide forwards, bend the knee and push to a straight leg lunge. Good. And repeat, girls. Let's try that, you know, a few more times through the process. So 90-90 lunge. Hold, then twist. That's it. Then hands down to hamstrings. Try and keep those back straight, shoulders square as you're pushing the hamstrings. Turn the toes out in back to neutral and drive forwards to a straight leg lunge and try and lift that body up. Fabulous. A couple more times, girls, at your own pace. Very nice. So this is now working through your hip flexors for your back leg of your splits. And it's also challenging your hamstrings for the front leg of your splits. And we're moving nice and gently between the two positions so we're not holding it for too long. 
just a gentle stretching sensation is all you want to feel, never pain. Good. Very nice girls. Just pull that core in there loose on that last lunge so that stomach sucked in. Beautiful, look at the difference there, fantastic. Okay, last one girls. And when you're done, we'll move on to the final exercise in this circuit. Very good, okay. From your lunge position, you then want to drive forwards onto your front leg so you end up going to a T-shape or otherwise known as a single leg Romanian deadlift or an airplane and then drive up, open your hips and pick the front leg up to a parallel pos passe position or a march position and then slowly lower back down to the T-shape on that leg. Your support knee should be slightly soft and bent. So we go from T shape to single leg balance with the free leg up in a parallel passe position. Keep your hips nice and square, your core tight, shoulders straight and square, head in neutral. Good, just unlock that support leg a little bit more for me, Lily Clo. beautiful. Very good. So you can do up to eight to 10 of these, and then we are all ready to try a little bit of work in our hip flex stretches. Good, Luce, super. So if you have the hip flex stretcher, now is the time to grab it so we can practice some splits work. Let's begin in a lunge shape. So the front leg of your splits is a head. Your feet should start hip width apart. Body up tall, draw in through your tummy muscles and squeeze your glutes together so you feel the stretch down the back thigh. Everyone just check that your kneecap is pointing straight down to the floor on the back leg and your tiptoes are pointing up towards the ceiling and they're not rotating to one side or the other because we'd like nice square splits. From that position then, you can then slowly lower down towards splits with your hands by you. But it's really important that your hips stay nice and square. So Mia's super flexible, so she's going to lift one leg up onto the wobble board. What you don't want to see, and Lucy's going to demonstrate this, is that your hips are all twisted. So. That's it, you have to imagine there are car headlights on the front of your hips and they're pointing straight forward. They're not drifting to one side or the other. Now let's have a look at that front leg. Could you draw a straight line down from your hip through the center of your kneecap all the way to your tiptoes? What you don't want to see is that that front leg is drifting in towards the other side of your body like that from Lucy. So she's going to pop that back to neutral. And also the kneecap on your front leg should be pointed up towards the ceiling, not rolled in or rolled out. So Lucy's going to pop herself back to neutral, super. Point, stretch through those toes, squeeze the muscles at the front of your thigh. That front leg's nice and straight. Draw in through your tummy muscles and squeeze your bottom glute, glute muscles together, okay? And you should feel that stretch down your back leg. Now, if you can stay square, then let's take our hands back towards the wall bar. But again, everyone check that they don't lose their shape and position. So your toes are still pointed and they're directly in front of your knee and your hip. Your kneecap is pointing up towards the ceiling on the front leg. Your hips are beautifully square. Your back knee is pointing straight down towards the floor and your back toes are pointing straight 
up towards the ceiling. Core engage, nice and stretched. Only lift your leg onto your wobble board like Mia if you can keep this beautiful straight shape. Amazing work, girls. We are all done. Thank you so much to Louise from Rejuvenate Physio, Lucy, Mia and Lily Clo for another brilliant session. Don't forget to tag us in your posts for the giveaway or if you have a private account please send them to us directly and use the hashtag strengthandstretch2. See you next week! <laughs>